Hey gang, welcome back to Joe Daddy's Workshop. Many of you follow me from my main channel, Joe Daddy's Garage, and if you do, you already know that what I do on that channel is work on old cars and restore old Mustangs and stuff like that. So if you haven't seen that channel and you're interested in that stuff, by all means, go check out Joe Daddy's Garage. Now, this channel, I try to do everything that's not necessarily car related, and I feel like I've done a pretty good job with that, and unfortunately, I haven't been able to put up much lately but I have an idea that I want to share with you. Now recently, I purchased a Master Tow tow dolly because we plan to do some trips with our RV and I want to tow my little car behind it, but I'm having trouble making that work. And the reason for that is the way these tow dollies are set up, and I'll show you all this in just a minute, they have a ratchet strap on the front that's on a pivot. And when you try to ratchet down a small, low vehicle, like something that's really low, like my Honda Fit, there's no room. You can't get the ratchet up in there. And if you do, you have to like move the bumper cover out of the way. And when you try to take things apart, the bumper cover is again in the way and it makes it even worse. So I'm going to show you that and the problem I'm having. But I also have what I think is the answer. Now, I try to do uh, different approaches on things and maybe something like this already exists. I don't know. I just came up with this idea myself. Um, but I'm going to use some of these. Now these are a ratcheting mechanism that normally gets bolted to the side of like a truck trailer. So when they have cargo straps going over heavy stuff on their trailer, they can ratchet this down. This thing turns and does the same thing as kind of a ratchet strap, but you have a ratchet with a socket and a handle. What this does is it gives me a lot more clearance so I can put stuff on the tow dolly. So the idea is, because I always like to recycle too, I have some of these brackets and these are left over from that project where I built a car jig out of a boat trailer. <laughs> but I need to clean up this edges a little bit, but this will get bolted, essentially bolted together. Okay. And then I'm going to show you how this is going to work on the tow dolly. Okay. So this is my little Honda fit. And as you can see, this thing is very low to the ground. In fact, there's only about, oh, not even six and a half inches of clearance. And then if you look at the distance from the front tire out, that's probably to the very front of the car, a good oh, 20 inches or so. But you're dealing with this limited space right here. And let me show you why that makes it difficult to put a strap on. Okay, so simulating that this is on the tow dolly and if I have that strap over top of the tire and I come down to the front this is the only space available for using the ratchet system that is built into the tow dolly there is just no room to make this work let me show you the tow dolly and why I know it's a bit windy but for demonstration purposes I have a spare wheel from my car that I put on the tow dolly so if I put this like that and I take the strap, you can see here, this ends up getting in the way. So if I'm trying to ratchet this, and this isn't even, this is where it normally sits. So you don't have any clearance. And you start to ratchet the handle up, you run out of room. The real difficulty is taking it off because you have to release this all the way up like that in order for it to come down. And that is just not gonna work. Now. The nice thing about this tow dolly is you have this that can slide left and right based on the width of the car. So what I have done, here I just took that angle bracket and I clamped it on. My thought is I can just simply do that and it'll move side to side. Now initially I wanted to bolt this onto this carrier, but I may end up welding it. Uh, I can see that it would it would be a tight fit. Let me turn these vice grips around and see if that'll help make the demonstration better. But this allows this to move left and right, just like that one. And I can take this one off, leave this one on, and just let it hang like it normally would normally hangs like that and it's out of my way 
there might be, and I think there is, just enough room that I can put some bolts in there. But, ideally I could just weld this, because I'm never going to use it for anything else. And then, the strap comes in, goes over the top of the tire like it's supposed to. Take my socket and ratchet. And now I have access to that. The car has is clearance is about there. The bumper will be here. So there it is. Pretty simple, but effective. And then to remove this, you have to do the opposite. You have to put tension on and release the, the pawl and then turn it loose. I like it. You know what? I do a lot of welding and I feel like I'm just gonna weld that on. So I've already ground the edges, clean that up, but I need to weld with 30 thousandths wire and currently my R Captain 200 has 25 thousandths wire in it. So I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to swap this out because I go back and forth between these. Oh, let me show you this. If you haven't already seen this welder, that's the only one I've ever seen that has a light inside of it. And that really makes things helpful. So I've already cut the weld, uh, the ball off the end of the wire because when you're welding it will ball up. And in order to swap this out, I had to cut that off and re-spool my 25 thousandths wire. Pretty simple. I've demonstrated this before in other videos, but I don't think I've done it on this channel. Now, this welder is by Art Captain, and I have discounts available. So if you're looking at getting a welder, this thing has been fantastic. It's the only welder I use now. Um, I have no complaints about it at all. And they're a good company, as far as I'm concerned. Grab my 30. Of course, this wire is bent, so I'll have to cut off the bent part. Just how you store these. So cut that off. Line up. There's a little pin up here. So I'm going to line that up uh, on the welder, or on a spool, I should say. Get that in place. Thread that back on. Oh, you know what? I got ahead of myself. But that's okay, because this welder is so convenient that I'm able to remedy what I just did. I'm going to hold on to this wire with my left hand, and I have to change the feed roller. So I had 25 thousandths, so I have to take this back off and flip it around. So that says 0 0.8, and that says 0.6. Now that's relative to the size. So the 0.6 is on this side and that is for the 25 thousandths wire. The 0.8 is for the 30 thousandths. So I have to turn that around and put the 0.8 inboard. So set that up, put that on, thread this back on, and I did all that with just one hand. I take the wire, feed it, This is so easy. I really can't complain about this at all. Compared to the other welders that I've used, this is just so easy to work with. So I'm gonna feed that, close down, clamp, and now what I can do, I don't have the gas turned on, but I can squeeze the gun, and it'll start running it, and then it'll pick up speed here in a second. I'm gonna take this tip off to help it feed. There it is. Put my tip back on. Put my cap back on. And I'm ready to weld. Now typically when I use this welder, I put it on synchronous, but I have to turn it off of synchronous so that it gives me these other options. That's setting my gas, so you can change the gas to whatever mix you're using. Argon CO2, and then this changes your wire size. So that's 25 thousandths, that's 30 thousandths. 
Now I can go back to synchronous and I'm ready to weld. At this point I can adjust this, my uh, voltage, and that will help with whether it's doing exactly what I want or not. So I'm going to set it about 18 and uh, we're going to run with it. I'm just going to verify before I actually <laughs> do all that welding, I'm going to make sure it fits. We're good to go. I know that is not going anywhere. Yeah. All right. Okay. So for demonstration purposes, as I mentioned or showed earlier, the clearance from the tire to the bottom of the bumper cover on the car is about six and a half inches. And that represented that is represented by the height of this two by four sitting here. So this would be the bottom of the car. And whenever you try to use the built-in ratchet strap, you have nothing but interference because you can't ratchet up and then you can't release it without having the bumper in the way. So this is beneficial if you've got a nice high clearance vehicle. But really you can see this is a problem. So we move this one out of the way and then this is the one that I made so again I can take this slip it around put the strap through it And now if I put this back up, you can see all that is below the bumper cover. I'll put it on this side. So everything's below the bumper cover. And of course the advantage is I can move this side to side and get centered on the tire. All right, that'll be the end of this video. Thanks for watching, and if you're interested in buying one of these, I will post a link in the description below to Amazon where you can get these and uh, other than that that's it for this video so thanks for watching and until next time take care of yourselves see ya